And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the same that had been told to them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. You may be seated. Look away now, look at somebody and say, he's here. He's here. Uh, when, when my son Princeton was born, we went out on social media uh, a little over two years ago and we put out what is called a birth announcement. And the birth announcement, its primary purpose is to let friends and family know that the baby who was once expected to come is now here. And in this Luke and text, this is the most important and most elaborate birth announcement in the history of mankind. You may ask the question, why is it the most important? It's the most important birth announcement because the birth is long awaited, prophetically given, and much anticipated Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Wonderful Counsel. I wish I should have went to the Baptist Church this morning. The Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Waymaker, the Miracle Worker, and the Promise Keeper. Jesus, all of these things that we were told would come is now here. That's why this was the most important birth and after ever given. He was not just a prophet. Jesus was not just a teacher. He was not just a holy man of God. He was not just a pastor. He was not just a preacher. He was not just a priest. But he was 100% man, and at the same time, he was 100% God. Yeah, I said it. Jesus Christ is God. He's God in the flesh. He's the Word. He came down. He was there in the beginning when God said, let us make man in our image. Guess who us was? It was God the Father. It was God the Son, Jesus Christ. And it was God the Holy Spirit. He's 100% man, and he's 100% God. He was 100% man when he cried at the death of Lazarus, but he was 100% God when he took a little boy to fish and go, and he fed 5,000 men. Yeah, he was 100% man when he was tired and he had to take a rest by the well, but he was 100% God when he looked at the wind and the, and the storm and said, Peace, peace, live. Jesus Christ, 100% man and 100% God. That's why this was the most important birth announcement ever in the history of humanity. Because it was announcing that God was coming down in flesh. It was not only the most important birth announcement, as I said, it was the most elaborate. God is just an elaborate, insane, crazy, do stuff out the box stuff that we never think about God. He sent an angel to shepherds in the field to let them know that, hey, the one that was promised, the one that was prophesied about, So we can understand them being afraid. So the angel in itself. 
was just enough for us to say that it was an elaborate, elaborate uh, birth announcement, but Jesus didn't stop right there. It didn't, just the angel wasn't enough. Then, out of nowhere, the Bible says, suddenly, a heavenly host is in, in, in the cloud singing. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine, I know, I know, brother, I know one of the shepherds was like, I ain't even spoke nothing tonight. What's going on? That was yesterday. Y'all tell me, y'all told me y'all was hot last night, but anyway, it was hot. Okay? <laughs> they see the angel, then all of a sudden they see this angel angelic choir. What, what was the angelic choir? They were singing, they were saying what? Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. This amazes me that God felt like Jesus' birth was so important that he had to make an elaborate birth announcement. Now think about this. This seemed like it would have been perfect for the king and the queen. Right? <laughs> this elaborate birth announcement. It seemed like it would have been perfect for the king and the queen. It seems like it, it would have been perfect for the prince, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, those who were of high esteem, Eric, the wealthy, the rich. It seemed like this would have been perfect for them. But God did all of this for shepherds. Sicky, dirty, nasty, filthy, a low class. Shepherds were looked down upon at that time. They, they, they say that shepherds was one of the, the fields and one of one of the works that it didn't require any skill. <laughs> it didn't really require any skill for you to walk around, make sure the sheep had some grass, make sure they had some water. And make sure the wolves and bears and stuff didn't attack them. It didn't take much skill. You didn't have to go get a degree to be a shepherd. You didn't have to go to school to be a shepherd. You didn't have to have any special notice or power to be a shepherd. And yet God saw fit that they deserved an elaborate visitation at the birth of Jesus Christ. I wish I had some spiritual people in here. Because you would have got excited because you would have realized that you and your dirty, stinky, filthy, nasty self, other people thought you was worthless, but God thought you were worth it. Other people thought you were invaluable, but God saw value in you, and he visited you when other people probably looked at you and said, she don't deserve a visit from God. He don't deserve a visit from God, but yet and still, one day, when you didn't even realize that God's glory was on you. Anybody remember when the glory of God was on you? And you realize that Jesus Christ was born. <laughs> What amazes me is not only the fact of who this elaborate birth announcement went to, but where? <laughs> right. Where? Where? Right. The Bible says they were in the field. I'm, I'm still in my introduction. Is that okay? Yeah. I ain't got nowhere to go. The Bible says that it was in a field full of sheep. Put yourself in a field full of animals. I don't know about you, you ever been to the fair, you ever been to a pet zoo, you know you got kids, you went to the pet zoo. How did you enjoy that? <laughs> it was cool looking at the animals, but man, after about five minutes, you start thinking about the stench. <laughs> what, <laughs> what, what caused the stench? It, it was all the manure. It, it was all the manure and all the, the, the waste from the animals that would that would come. But but if you even think about the petting zoo, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. Because they had people that would come and clean out the bins where the animals were. But there was no bin cleaners in the field. So this was not only a field that was full of sheep, but it was a field that was full of, I mean, see, y'all need to be saved, y'all need to be saved. Y'all need to be saved. But God still sees fit that in the midst of all of that sheep stuff, I still have an assignment, I still got a plan, I 
was sitting in the jail cell. <laughs> I was sitting in the jail cell. I was sitting in the jail cell when Jesus came and was glorious. So it does not matter where you are right now. God can come. He can knock on your door. He can send a sign. He can send a word. All you got to do is just believe that Jesus is born. <laughs> I'd be remiss to leave out the fact that also the time. Mm -hmm, right. So the God thought this elaborate birth announcement was worthy to be sent to some shepherds. He thought that it was a great place to go visit and give to a place to feel that was full of sheep. But it also said that it was night time. <laughs> We serve a God that specializes in bringing light to dark situations. <laughs> I want to encourage somebody this Christmas season because best believe everybody does not have joy during Christmas season. Somebody who's watching this, somebody in here right now, this may be your first time without Big Mama. This is your first, first holiday without Big Mama. This is your first, first holiday without your husband, your spouse, a child, your best friend, a cousin. But guess what? Even in the darkest of moments, yes, even in the darkest of yes. nights, God has a way of coming and bringing light to our yes. situations. Yes. Woo! We serve a God of joy. Yes. We serve a God. And do you know what joy really is? Joy is some feeling that comes from the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of us that has nothing to do with our situation. It has nothing to do with our circumstances. And that was one of the reasons why Jesus came so that he could give us joy. Even when I'm poor, I can have joy. Even when I'm sick, I can have joy. Even when my relationship is not going right at home, I can have joy. Even when my child is acting wayward and crazy and losing their mind, I can still have joy. Why? Because I know that Jesus Christ was born for me. I can still have peace. Then I can still have peace. Because when Jesus was getting ready to leave, Deanna, look at me. He said, I'm leaving, but the peace, I'm going to leave with you. Yeah. He said, my peace, I'm going to leave with you. <laughs> he didn't say the peace you can get from being held by a man, Makisha. He didn't say the peace you can get by Jack Daniel being by the fireplace. He didn't say the peace that you can get by smoking a little something, something. He didn't say none of that peace. He said, my peace. And I know the peace that Jesus had. It was a Holy Ghost peace. It was a supernatural peace. It was a peace that man can't give and man can't take away. It was a peace that situation can't give and my situation can't take it away. I don't know about you, but I'm so grateful that I serve a God that he ain't really stuck to let his peace can come and light my situation up. Please somebody say, God, I'm going to light this season up. I'm going to light this season up. Restricted from going to the dirty, stinking, filthy places that he needs to go. But this night, this night, Jesus was born. God gives us the most important, the most elaborate birth announcement ever in the history of mankind. I'm going to go back to the basics for a minute. I'm going to answer the question Why was Jesus born? I want to give you five reasons. Five reasons why Jesus was born. And they will bring us joy and they will bring us peace. Number one, to save us from our sins. Mm. Jesus was born to save us from our sins. Mm. Matthew 1 and 21, write it down, look at it on the screen. It says, she will bear a son mm. and you shall call him Jesus. Yes, Lord. Right. For he will save his people from their sins. Yes, Lord. Listen, every human that was ever born on the face of this earth came in and was born in sin. Yes. We are sin-ridden creatures, sin-laden creatures. We're full of sin inside and out. And guess what? We couldn't save ourselves. Yay. And God knew it. Yes, sir. And I think the problem with some of us today is we just don't know that we can't save ourselves. Oh, Listen, I, I, I want to show you something. I want to give you an illustration. I, I used this a couple times. And, and I'll show you, uh, Danny, can you bring me that sheet right here? I, I want to show, show you our condition. I want, I want to show you our condition. Just for the person that doesn't really re uh, uh, realize it. Marvin, Marvin, come here. Uh, er Eric, come here. Uh, come on, what? I'm going to walk like y'all. 
No Jesus. Oh, the sheep. You get on this end somewhere. Come this way. You get more. You get over. Uh, you're the only one looking here on this stage. <laughs> so you're going to play God. Come, come straight. Come get in the middle real quick. Come get in the middle. Let me just bring it up. Y'all married, huh? Y'all need wives because y'all don't follow directions. <laughs> he hard headed. Where was my dad? He hard headed. <laughs> Well, I just said that my name is Bennett, and I ain't here. <laughs> All right, so Adam and Eve. Let me go here first. So, so I'm Adam. This is God. Get ready to be in position. This is God. I'm Adam. And when He created me, this is where we were. Relationship. We were connected. I knew His voice. His heartbeat. His essence, everything about him, he was fully exposed to me. To me, Adam, first Adam, God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit in one. Uh, then Eve came. <laughs> Eve came with her fire self. But make it with a piece of fruit. <laughs> that was not fair. <laughs> Some stuff just ain't fair, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> she got her fruit sack talking to her. It's Christmas, but can I talk to my man real quick? Our, our, God, our, our call is to protect our house. Uh, one of the first mistakes that, that Adam made, brother, was, was he was there. He was, he was in proximity because the moment Eve bit the fruit. She just reached over to Adam. So Adam was there. And Adam, he obviously, my assumption is he heard and was watching the serpent talk to his wife. That, that was Adam's first mistake. Okay. Because God never told Adam that if Eve eat the fruit, there was going to be some problems. I think if Eve would have ate the fruit, then God could have just, just replaced her and took another rib and made another one. But the commandment was given to Adam. Right. Nothing happened when he ate the fruit. It was when Adam ate the fruit. Meaning, you are the pastors of your house. The responsibility falls on you. You are the thermostats. Yeah. So he didn't protect his, his wife from the enemy. And then when she passed the fruit on to him, he did it. Uh, he broke the commandment first. Uh, and then when that happened, Separation came in. Wow. Mm. And until AD 33 and a half, this was the relationship between man and God. Sin. Sin. This was going to constantly be here. That's why Jesus had to come. So that he could break down this wall of partition. In the temple, there was different areas, and there was one was there was the holy place and the holy of holies, and in the holy of holies there was this curtain, thick curtain, that when Jesus Christ, when he the, the moment he died on the cross, the Bible says that the curtain ripped. Yes. Well, that was, yeah. And that was a representation of sin. The partition wall of sin being broken down, that now we can have a pure, connected relationship yeah, with God. Because yeah, yeah. sin that had once separated us yes. has now been covered in the blood of yeah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the first reason. Go ahead and take that. Why Jesus Christ came. Y'all give them a hand. Give them a piece of hand. So we were on the side of sin. Jesus had to come so he could break down that wall of sin so that we could then now have a connected relationship with Jesus Christ. Here's the thing about our relationship with Christ. 
We can always bring back that wall and see it up. <laughs> it has not been complete. Eternally, it's been completely broken down. But as believers, we can always allow the wall of sin that can cause us to be separated. So I believe some of you in here, you're believers, you're saved, you accept that Jesus Christ, but you've allowed sin to build the wall up. Yet you know him, yet you still have eternal life. But there's a blockage between you and God. That's why you can't hear him. That's why you can't feel him. That's why you feel like you can't see him. Because that wall, but guess what? The wall has already been broken broken down so we can continue to break it down whenever it's time to raise itself up. He came, one, to save us from our sin. Two, why was Jesus born? Two, to fulfill the law. Jesus was born to fulfill the law. That's too deep for me, Pastor. We don't worry, we'll get it. Matthew 5 and 17. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets, the law of the Old Testament, all the law that Moses had given, Ten Commandments and everything that went with it, la di and everybody. I have not come to abolish them, but to do what? To fulfill them. No person prior to Christ was ever able to fulfill and walk and obey and never break all 600 plus commandments in the Old Testament. Jesus had to come and do what you and I could not do. I'm so grateful that we serve a God that says you don't have to fulfill it. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to not be able to break it. I'm going to send my son on your behalf so when you Oh, he can pick it right back up. When you can't hit the mark, Jesus Christ said, I can hit it right on the boards. I, I wish I had about seven people who were praying God for coming down and putting on sinful flesh so that he can do what I can't do. So I don't have to worry about being perfect. I don't have to worry about never falling at the moment because my big brother Jesus, he came to fulfill the love. perfect. <laughs> I'm trying to make your neighbor feel bad for not being perfect. I'm trying to make your neighbor feel bad for missing the mark. That was the whole purpose and the reason why Jesus came. So he could do what you could not do. I'm almost done. Am I born, y'all? Why was Jesus born? One, to save us from our sins. Two, to fulfill the law. Three, to defeat Satan. Ooh, I'm excited about that right there. That joke can get on my dog down there, my everlasting man. I promise you, if he was in the flesh, I'd shoot him 17 times in the head. <laughs> First John 3 and 8. Whoever makes a practice of sinning, somebody gonna shout right here, is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Listen, I don't know whether you believe it or not, but the work of the devil is to destroy your marriage. The work of the devil is to destroy your children. He want to take your peace, care. He want to take your joy. He don't want you to be promoted on your job. He don't want you to have no house. He don't want you to have no apartment. He wants you living under the bridge. He wants you high, drunk, sleeping around. That's the work of the enemy, but I'm so grateful. Get up. 
Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Hey, get your butt up. Get your butt up. Get up. you by giving you a spouse. God cannot prove how much he loves you by letting you win the lottery or letting you win a, a ticket scratch off. God cannot prove how much he loves you because all of those things are worthless when you compare it to the life of Jesus Christ and he sent down. He said, son, I got an assignment for you. Come on. Teach us, sir. He said, yes, daddy. I need you to go down. <laughs> Jesus says, I'm omnipresent, so he was already in the future in the beginning. He's omniscient, he knows all things. So before his dad even said something, he already knew. Yeah. Daddy, I'm ready. Yes, sir. Because I love them so much. Yeah. Yeah. I love Marvin that much. Uh -huh. He said, All right. Jesus, son, son, it's time. Yeah. It's time. Mary's been betrothed. Mary's engaged. It's time. God. Go through the Old Testament all day long. Angels are going around singing, holy, 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 holy. Son, you already know when you get down there, they're going to talk about you. At the same time, all the angels saying, holy, holy, holy. But when you get down there, they're not going to call you holy. They're going to call you a liar. They're going to call you a disobedient person. 
They're going to call you a cheater. Yes. They're going to lie to you. They're going to hate you. They're going to crucify you. That's all. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all I got to do. So that Marvin can spend eternity with me. That's it. I just got to let them spit on me. All I got to do is let them cut the hairs of my beard. That's it. That's the cost of having Bethany laying on my bosom for a time. That's all I got to deal with, God. Daddy, that's it. Let's do it. Let's do it. First, for a purpose. To show me how much he loved me. And every now and then I think about Jesus on the cross. It's not Easter, Pastor. But ain't no Easter without. <laughs> without this. Listen. Ain't no Easter without this. The birth don't mean nothing without that. I can't talk about one without talking about the other. Every, every, every now and then I think about it. When I'm thinking about the cross, I'm thinking about the thing that was going through Jesus' mind. Because he had the capacity of being 100% God. To name every human being that would walk the face of this earth all in the instant time. He thought about me. <laughs> That's unfathomable, right? Because his, his mind is higher than my mind. I can't even comprehend the things that he has the capabilities of comprehending. But I believe that a deal, my name and my face ran across his mind. As they was nailing him. Don't worry, Easter, I'll preach about the birth. <laughs> so we'll make up for it. As they were nailing him, they had one arm nailed. And the flesh said, Really? All you gotta do is, and everybody's disintegrated. And right when he was about to, he saw me. <laughs> right when he was about to, he saw you. And he said, all right. That's how much I love him. That's how much I care for him. God is like, you want me to prove how much I love you by a house that I gave you my life? You, you want me to prove how much I love you by getting your bank account from negative to positive and I gave you my life. You, you, you want me to prove how much I love you by helping you get out of $120,000 debt and I gave you my life. That, that's what I'm worth. My love is worth $120,000 debt. That's going to make you praise me, huh? <laughs> well, if, I, if I miraculously pay your debt off, now you're going to become a praiser. Now you're going to become a worshiper. Oh, if I send you a spouse that can treat you like a superstar, oh, now you're going to become a worshiper of me. If I give you the house and the car, oh, now you're going to become a praiser of me as if that stuff is worth more than the cost of my life. He says, I've already proved how much I love you. I've already proved if you could just see it, if you could just get it, I've already proved how much I love you. Which leads me to number five, our last point, and we're done. He came to give us eternal life. He came to give eternal life. John 10 and 10 says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, but I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I can't earn my way in. I can't work my way in. The price has already been paid. Listen. I didn't stop the stuff that I stopped so I could get in. I stopped the stuff that I stopped because I got in. So, so look, look, listen, because I'm here every time the doors open up on Thursday night and Sunday morning, if I ain't on vacation, if I ain't feeling well, if I don't need a break, I'm here. Not because I'm trying to earn my way in. It's because I already got in. I ain't stopped getting drunk so I can earn my way in. I stopped getting drunk because I'm already in. I ain't stopped sleeping around because it didn't feel good. I ain't stopped sleeping around because I didn't like women no more. I didn't stop sleeping around. I stopped sleeping around not so I could get in, but because I already got in. He came 
to give us eternal life. Maybe there's a skeptic here. Maybe there's a skeptic watching this on YouTube or social media at any given point in time. Guess what? There's two places. I don't care what you've been taught. I don't care what you've heard. I don't care what you believe. But there's a life after the grave. There's a life after the grave. Two places. Eternal punishment with Satan and his angels. Or eternal life with Jesus Christ yeah. and God the Father. Yeah. <laughs> he came so that you and I could have a choice. That's not fair. I don't know if I believe that the loving God would send me to hell. No, God will not send you to hell. <laughs> you send yourself to hell. <laughs> But if you want to spend eternity with me, or if you want to spend eternity with Satan and his angels and eternal punishment, but he says, if you want to spend it with me, all you got to do is believe. What do I got to believe, Pastor? Got to believe first that Jesus Christ, God the Son, came down, put on sinful flesh one night in Bethlehem. Yes, sir. Through a virgin Mary, a miraculous conception, a miraculous birth by a woman who had never known a man, chosen by the grace. I'm so glad that God's grace chooses us even when we don't deserve it. She was no more deserving than anybody else. He was born, he walked the face of this earth 33 and a half years. And at his own decision, he let them put him on the cross. You got to believe that. You got to believe that when he died, he went into the grave. And three days later, you got to believe that he got up. Is that it? You got to believe that he's alive right now. <laughs> where, is, where is he alive at? For one, he's alive inside of me. <laughs> he says, when I leave, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. <laughs> but I'm going to send a comforter. <laughs> That's why in the middle of the night, when I can't see nobody, the Holy Spirit can arrest me and wrap me up. Yes. And comfort me. Yes, sir. But he's seated at the right hand of the Father. Waiting on God to tell him to come back for a church. Without a spot or a wrinkle. Yes. If you can believe that. And then invite him to be the Lord. The Savior. The Messiah and the Christ of your life. Then you will be saved. You ain't got to go home and get cleaned up. Fixed up. You ain't got to go home and pull up. Pastor, I got the Hennessy on the counter ready for the Cowboys game. How about you? I'm going to go home. I'm going to pull that stuff out. I'm going to pour the weed out. I'm going to kick my living boyfriend and girlfriend out. I'm going to fix all that stuff, Pastor. And then I'm going to come back in 2020 and I'm going to give my life to Jesus Christ. God says, for one, yeah, you don't have to do that. <laughs> and for two, you probably can't do that. <laughs> That's why it's cooked on all this stuff, because you can't get off of it on your own. He says, come down, accept me. Invite me into your life to be your Lord, Savior, your Master, your God. And then together we can go fix all of that stuff. Together we can go clean you up. What? You for real? You talking about, you mean God going to work with me. Yeah, God going to work with you. Just like he worked with old messed up me. Just like he worked with old messed up David. Just like he messed with, worked with old messed up Saul and Paul. Just like he worked with old messed up Peter and messed up Moses. Yeah, yeah, all them. All, all, all them. Yes, sir. Just like he worked with all of them. It's the same way that he worked with us. I'm so grateful for the grace of God. The spirit of forgiveness, the offering of forgiveness, that when we make mistakes, when we sin, when we fall short. I'm so grateful, even more so, that when we commit sin and know it's sin, uh -huh. <laughs> when our heart is broken, he still forgives us. <laughs> Willfully or unwillfully, when we come to him with a pure heart, yeah. he still forgives us. Yeah, that's, that's the God that will give you eternal life on today. 
Listen, I'm going to give you an opportunity. When I count down from three, we're going to jump to our feet. And we're going to give God a crazy praise for the birth of Jesus Christ. And if you want to accept Jesus Christ for the first time, you can come down and accept him. Maybe you're here and you've accepted Jesus Christ before, but you walked away. You backslid, as the mothers used to say in the old church of Zion. Guess what? Maybe that's the reason why God sent you here this morning, so that you can make a recommitment to Jesus Christ. Maybe 